On the reconstruction fund, though, boosting sovereign manufacturing capacity, easing supply chains, don't they then have a, a deflationary effect if you're not well, relying on global supply chains, which were a big part of this this inflation in the first place that we're seeing right now. This government doesn't talk to industry. They just ask industry what it needs. They don't ask manufacturers what they need. What they need is cheaper energy, uh, busting of the supply chain congestion that they face every day, a workforce that they can actually find and employ at a reasonable rate. Those are the things they need. An off-budget fund that effectively takes an equity or debt position in your business that won't get up and running for another 10 months and then probably won't be in a position to actually provide any funding for another year and even then not of a type or in a type of business that actually works for our sovereign manufacturing you... capability. This is a huge problem and that's why I'm talking to the crossbench every day when I'm here to say, you know, regardless of your political philosophy, this is not going to work. You spoke about the, the energy question. Doesn't industry need certainty? In fact, all the indus industry groups that we've had on this program have said we need the safeguard mechanism through... We need the certainty. Should the coalition be listening to them? We will never vote for bad policy and a compulsory safeguard mechanism is exactly that. Now, I was in Western Australia a couple of weeks ago. 70 of these more than 200 companies that will be caught by the safeguard mechanism are the biggest companies, resources, manufacturing in Western Australia. I can tell you the people there are aghast at this because in every regional town that I visited, from Geraldton to Albany to Bunbury to Mandurah and in Perth itself, they were talking about the need for finding more people to work in this workforce, for the importance of these jobs underpinning every single thing that you see, whether it be the coffee shops, the tourism, the small businesses, uh, you know, it just gives you some sense of how important it is to get this right. Have you said you've and given up on the teal seats by not having a, a climate policy? Absolutely not. Uh, I've often said the road back to government is, of course, through the teal seats. Because remember, if you don't like what the government is doing, uh, the answer is not to vote teal. If you don't like what the government is doing, and many, many more people are starting to dislike what this deceitful government is doing, then you need to vote for the Liberal and National parties, because only then can you change the government. So, um, you know, the, the teal uh, members have done some good things. They've done some good things on integrity, and I, and I thank them for their work. But we need to see what they do on on the upcoming Stoush on Stage 3 tax cuts because I am sure that Jim Chalmers has those in his sights and we absolutely need them to back us in on the stance we're taking on superannuation. On Scott uh, Morrison, he, he's apparently going to be retiring from Parliament reportedly by the end of this year, um, potentially for a consulting job overseas. Do you, do you think... Would you encourage him to, to take up an offer like that? Have you, have you spoken to him about that potential? Uh, no, I haven't, Kieran. Um, Scott is a friend and has been a colleague for many years and I've known him before I even entered this parliament and I know he will make the decisions that are in the best interests of himself and his family and also in the best interests of the people of Cook who he has represented here and uh, who he has that compact with as their local MP. And I know, I know, yep, absolutely, he's continued that, that job uh, with a focus on, on Cook. It's not like he's dropped the ball on that but do you think as a former Prime Minister he's earned the right to say, OK, if I get offered a lucrative... Mm -hmm job as a consultant overseas to take it well, I never when give, it suits him. <laughs> I never give my colleagues advice over the airwaves and if they ask me my opinion, I might give it to them in a private conversation. But as I said, I know he'll make the best decision for, decision for himself and his family. On the superannuation front, it looks like it's a pretty popular decision what the government did. Mm. Over Well over 60% of people backing it. They're, well, what they've promised to do, mm. it doesn't come into effect until after the next election. Do you accept oh. that you're not on the, the popular side of that debate? Well, that's if people believe the government. But what this is is a deceitful government. It's a deceptive government. It's a government that is propagating mistruths every single day of the week. And one of those was that only uh, 80,000 people would be affected by their superannuation decision. Now, consider somebody who's 37 year old, years old now, has another 30 years of investment in super and is probably not thinking every day about their retirement, but they know that their superannuation is for their retirement, um, only to be told that this $3 million cap will catch them and actually reduce that final figure at which their concessional tax But the government ends. looks pretty happy to have this fight with you. Well, the government can have whatever fights it likes. We'll fight back because we're here for the Australian people. We're here for the self-funded retirees who actually want to keep more of their hard-earned savings. And we're here for the workers who are 
absolutely looking at their supermarket trolleys on fixed incomes and wondering where those dollars are going to go at the end of the week. Just finally, uh, before we go, that was an impressive wig you had on the House of Representatives. You don't see that every day. Look, Kieran, I've got to thank the Speaker because to appear uh, in the as Tina Turner, uh, as Tina Turner <laughs> um, just before question time, in the interests of raising money for a cancer charity in my wonderful electorate in the town of Griffith, was very special to me. And the Speaker actually made a contribution himself to this cancer charity. Um, so last Friday night, Tina Turner appeared with the uh, much better voice of Glenn Starr, local Triple M radio jock and performer, and. Um, and look, by saying I would appear in Parliament, we kicked the total amount raised up to $100,000. Yeah. Cancer is a tough journey. Mm. It's a really tough journey for people in the bush, so I'm absolutely mm. delighted to have played my part.